All right, we're on to the AFC South, and we go to the Houston Texans, uh, who have one of the most um, exciting offenses this year for fantasy football, specific to a few players, and it begins with Deshaun Watson, their quarterback who lit the league on fire last year in seven games played. As I mentioned, he had 19 touchdown passes before suffering an ACL tear um, in practice during the season. Stefani, we begin there because that might be the biggest question mark surrounding Deshaun Watson is – is there any reason to fear that a player with two ACL tears is going to be perpetually vulnerable to injury going forward? I don't think so. Uh, you, you sometimes see the case where an athlete will tear the ACL on one side, and there is some data to suggest that you are then more likely to suffer an ACL tear, whether it be on the opposite side, which is more common, or re-tear of that same knee. For Deshaun Watson, it was an opposite leg uh, injury. And I think one of the things that really helped him, number one, he's young, uh, but I, and I've said this before, was how he was able to come back from the first one, which he had in college. And when he came back from that injury, on in a relatively short timetable, by the way, he not only led his team to a national championship once, he did it again the following year and they ended up winning the national title. So he has seen how that he, how, not only... One of the measures is how do you return to your prior, can you return to your prior level of performance? He not only did that, he exceeded it. Everything about this rehab has been relatively smooth from my understanding. We're going to get a chance to see him play tonight. This is going to be his first game action, uh, I believe. So, look, the, you can judge for yourself with the eyeball test tonight, but I think he's certainly doing the work that would suggest he'll be full go by week one. Here's what I would say here is people are probably going to wonder why would Deshaun Watson not be ranked quarterback one if Stefania says he should be full go by week one and he was quarterback one on a points per game basis last year before the injury. I think the reality is this. He threw 16 touchdown passes in his final four games. He was the best vertical throwing quarterback last year when he played. I just... I am not expecting regression in the sense that I expect him to level off and just be an average starting quarterback. I'm just expecting regression in the same way that we all expected regression from Matt Ryan last season, in the same way that you would expect regression from a quarterback that throws 50 touchdowns in a season. If he throws 35 touchdown passes this year, it's still a phenomenal success for Deshaun Watson. We have him as a consensus top six quarterback because he has value as a runner and a thrower. But for those who want to make the case for him at number one, I get it. It's just, you know, like we don't know what really, really good Deshaun Watson looks like for a full season as opposed to exceptional beyond measure Deshaun Watson. Lamar Miller is Matthews, one of his longtime favorites in fantasy football. You're the highest by five spots amongst our rankers this season, Matthew. But you and I are the only people that have him ranked as a top 25 running back. You have him at 18. I have him at 23. Do you understand why others are perhaps overlooking uh, Lamar Miller? Yeah, I mean, like, you do I think, understand. I, yeah, of course, uh, of course, I understand. Like, he he did not look great. He is disappointed. I, I think when he came over from Miami, everyone was like, "Free Lamar Miller." I said, "Free M Lamar Miller." Yeah, and then he finally got the workload, and he hasn't been, I think, what we all expected him to be in Houston. Deontay Foreman, we'll talk about him in a little bit. Uh, last year, when healthy. Looked like the better running back on that team. Yeah, I, yeah. So, so I, I get the, the concern. Having said that, uh, coming off the Achilles injury there for Foreman, I think opens up a significant amount of playing time for Lamar Miller, who in Deshaun Watson starts last year. Lamar Miller averaged fifteen point four fantasy points per game on a per game basis. That would have been running back eleven last year. I mean, he's he. During that, you know, weeks three through eight last year where Deshaun Watson was like, you know, the number one quarterback in fantasy and just being absolutely ridiculous. Texans ranked inside the top 10 in terms of running back carries per game. They were, you know, a mobile quarterback like Deshaun Watson opens up a run game. I, I just think the hate's gone too far on Lamar Miller. Like, I don't love him, but I'm at, I'm at running back 18. And again, he's going well outside the top 20. He's going at outside the top 25. He's currently running back 26. So, Stefania, before, I'm going to circle back to Lamar Miller in a second. But Deontay Foreman is connected to this. And he, of course, suffered that Achilles tear last season. What might be a reasonable timetable for his return? Well, you know, guys are coming back as early as six months to competition after Achilles ruptures. But the common thread is that they don't, feel like they have quite the same power, explosiveness early on. And and Foreman, by his own acknowledgement, was progressing slowly in rehab. And so there was a question about whether he'd be able to fully participate in camp. 
whether he'd be ready by the season opener. It sounds like, um, as sometimes can happen in rehab, like things have picked up for him and he as he is doing better, but we still don't know for sure that he'll be available by week one. So that's going to carry a little question mark and they're not going to be able to count on him in the early part of the season. And this is something that as guys get better from this injury, they will perform better over time. So you could see a surge from him as the season goes on. But I'd be a little concerned about both his availability and just how he looks early. So along those lines, Stefania, because we have some concerns about Deontay Foreman, I go back to Lamar Miller here, who I think that this ranking of Lamar Miller is perhaps a little bit more indicative of where we expect him to end up in total scoring for the rest of the season. 15 the plus touches, season. 15 or more touches in 11 of 16 games last year for Lamar Miller. So the point that I was going to make is he has played 16 out of 16 games in four of six seasons in the NFL. Never missed more than three games. Largely durable for a player that is not mm-hmm. particularly big. At a vulnerable position. In a vulnerable way. spot, no less. So Lamar Miller is sort of like a classic high-ish floor, low ceiling RB2, which yep. every year there are two or three of those players. For a long time, that was kind of the Frank Gore role in you know in Indianapolis. Yeah. So I think Lamar Miller is kind of akin to Frank Gore in that way. And, and I will tell you, he there's also, there's literally no buzz around him. No one's whispering about Lamar Miller. Yep. It, it just, it's, and when you take him in your draft, no one's going to go like, ooh, hey, ah, you know, wow. Ooh, hey, wow, ooh, ah. No one's going to do that. <laughs> it's going to be, a, it's a snoozy pick. And yet, he's going as running back 26. He will outperform his ADP this year. Let's get to the two wide receivers in Houston, and we can be quick on DeAndre Hopkins. He's good. The only thing you can say about him is <laughs> do we have him ranked too low at wide receiver two. He would tell you yes. Right. He would tell I, you I mean, yes. If you've yeah. seen his tweets, he would tell you yes. Yeah, DeAndre Hopkins is an absolute stud. I Well, there's he, a reason he he um, opened the bag. What is it? He he held the bag. Secured, secured the, the bag. bag. Secured the bag. Pay You're attention. Better. You're getting better. Secured. Uh, to me, the first There was a bag, and it didn't go anywhere because it was so secure. Right. I don't think you want to get caught holding the bag. I yeah. think that's the opposite that's of what you want. That's the opposite of the bag. That's the only so, phrase right. Matthew's familiar with. Though. So, right. There was a bag being passed around, and DeAndre Hopkins grabbed secured it, it and secured it. He secured it. Yeah. He secured it. There, I think there's No somewhere... one else can get the bag because it is secure <laughs> with DeAndre Hopkins. They won't always all go in the first round, but to me, there are, like, there are pretty clearly eight players that deserve to be in the first round of all drafts, of all formats. Talk about Antonio Brown plus the four running backs. Zeke, Gurley, Le'Veon, and also David Johnson. Yep. Kamara, Barkley, DeAndre Hopkins are that next tier of players for me. Eight guys that need to go in the first round. You don't have Kareem Hunt there? I, mean, I said I there's understand there's eight, but I'm just eight. saying you don't you don't think Kareem Hunt, you said these are the guys that must go in the first round. You don't yep. think Kareem Hunt must I go. Mean, he would be like him round. and Mike Thomas are like right there for uh honorable mention. But let's get to Will. So again, That's my top ten, by the way. Right so there. Along those lines, again, um, we love DeAndre Hopkins this year. Will Fuller is an Although interesting player. Although I flip flop between Julio and Mike Thomas. I'll yeah, be I mean, I get it. Uh, and the, again, we're we're picking nits at that point of the draft. Will <laughs> What's Fuller. What's that sound like when you pick a nit? I don't think it makes a noise, Matthew. I think it's more of an expression. It's silent. It's turn of phrase more than anything else. Will Fuller has an ADP of thirty three. Which What's is, a hipper phrase? Picking nits or uh, securing the bag? I'm going I'm to defer to you, the expert on all but, things. But modern you're the there. kid. You're the one. You're the you're you're Johnny Lingo over there. Uh, I would say picking nits is more likely to appear in a popular song than uh, securing the bag. Does that give you the answer you're looking for? Sure. I thought it was nitpick. Is it is, it is. picking nits? It's, a, it's, it's an iteration. <laughs> oh, oh, it's an iteration. Yeah. Okay. Right. Spent too much time on this. I, Will Fuller is ADP thirty three amongst wide receivers. I've got him ranked at 35 amongst wideouts. The question with Will Fuller is not, does he have ability? He has ability. It's not, is his quarterback good? His quarterback is very good. The question is, can he become a high-volume player? Do you believe that a high-volume uptick, or do we think, do you expect an uptick in volume for him over the course of a season, Matthew? And was he lucky last year? He was definitely lucky. He scored seven times in his first four games on a per-game basis. He was the second-best wide receiver in fantasy. And then you think about those final six games where he was wide receiver 94 on a per-game basis. Eighty-eight. He, he averaged 8.81 fantasy points per deep reception. That was 88% above the league average. He scored on 71% of his deep receptions, league average 15.4. So, yeah, I believe there is some regression coming. Also, here's a concern. Um, The Texans offense was awful. I'm sorry, the Texans defense last year was awful. 
Now, look, I am a believer in Deshaun Watson's talent. Make no mistake about that. He is the real deal. Again, I am as a top five uh, quarterback here. But in Watson's final three games, they needed him to produce in a big way. Houston allowed 33 points per game. I, it, they just they got into all these shootouts because their defense was so beat up last year, and we expect with a healthy J.J. Watt and, and Clowney back, I mean, we expect this to be a much better defense field. I would, I would also say that Will Fuller, like you look at those total of fantasy points, he yeah. missed six games yeah. and part of a seventh. So uh, he did try and add some muscle in the offseason. He knows he needs to stay healthy to be Me too. able to be as effective. But – um, that he still had a fair amount of production for a guy who missed that much time. Uh, he's still one of my favorite uh, late round flyers. He's by the a way. terrific player. And they love him. He's a terrific player, and in terms of look, I think he will have more receptions at the end of this year, obviously because you know stay healthy. But I do think the scoring rate does come down somewhat.